So, you want to upgrade a set of Solstice gear, but you want to put in as little effort as possible. Good news, I've got a bunch of tips that's going to help you out in that process and make getting the new Moments of Triumph title a little less painful. To obtain a full set of legendary gear on my character took around 24 hours of playtime. Not all of that time was spent wisely though. I messed around, totally forgot a bunch of easy methods to bypass some of the more grindy objectives, and so on. Following this guide is going to help you get a full set of majestic legendary gear way faster, likely under 20 hours, even solo. And that's not a terrible grind all things considered. You have an entire month to get the full set on one character, Solstice event ends on the 27th of August, so you could play for an hour a day and still finish it before the end of the event. It's not a very fun grind, but at least the European aerial zone is somewhat refreshing rather than returning back to the infinite forest for the hundredth time. What I'm going to do for this video is go over the steps I can actually provide tips for. Of course there's some things that you just can't speed up and then there's some things that you can cheese and bypass way easier than its intended method. I won't be going in any particular order for the classes and the armor, I'm just going to go in order of how you would upgrade the armor like starting with a drain set. So let's get started. The very first thing you should do before you do anything else, any objectives or whatever, is pick up as many bounties as you possibly can. You'll need to save 50 bounties for the blue set. So hoard as many bounties as you can before you get there. Pick up Strike Bounties, Crucible Bounties, Black Armory, Destination, Solstice, Eververse, Tribute Hall, Gunsmith Bounties, all of them. Pick up every possible bounty you can get and start working on them before you get too far into the Solstice grind. You'll need them for later. When it comes to doing the public events, if you complete a public event that's near a fast travel point, once the event ends and the banner that says public event complete disappears, you can quickly fast travel back to that place and sometimes join the event, but in a different instance. You can even get three in a row if you're lucky. The faster you complete a public event, the better chance you have of joining it again. This allows you to pretty much knock out two or three public events in a very short amount of time. For adventures, I highly recommend running any of the ones on Mars. You can pick up three normal ones from Anna Bray. The Mars ones are ridiculously easy and super short. They all take less than five minutes to complete. You should be able to complete the precision kills, elemental orbs, and specific enemy type objectives while finishing the others. No need to farm orbs or anything, you'll get them naturally. The entire green armor set took me around seven hours and I was playing it solo, but it'll take you less if you run with a team. Honestly, the longest parts are the 10 Crucible matches and the 10 Strikes, they're just extremely boring. It really shows how lame the state of the Strike playlist is when that's one of the worst things on the list. Now, the Renewed Armor set is where you can speed up a lot more of the objectives. For getting Void Grenade kills on the Hunter, you have a few really good options. You can load up the Shuro Chi checkpoint in the Last Wish raid using the Wall of Wishes. This will teleport you to the beginning of the encounter where you can farm for grenade kills on Night Stalker. You could also load up the Nightfall and turn on the Grenadier modifier, but probably the easiest option is to jump into the Whisper mission and farm the Shadow Thrall there. Equip a weapon with Demolitionist and get kills to refill your grenade. This is actually the strategy I use to complete all those grenade kill triumphs for each subclass. It's super efficient. If you're going for the solar melee kills on a Titan, you can do a few creative things to complete this. One is equipping a solar sword and using up all of the ammo in it, then every kill you get with that sword without ammo will count as a charged melee kill. Of course, you'll need to equip the correct subclass, in this case it would be solar. This will also count towards the 300 kills with solar weapons, so you can basically farm out two at once. You can also use the forge batteries to get those kills. Meleeing while holding the batteries counts as a charged melee. Or you could also just use the Middle Tree Sunbreaker's throwing hammer. Now if you're going for the 200 arc super kills, simply load up the Whisper mission and head down to the Thrall Pit and use a masterwork weapon like Huckleberry or Recluse to quickly refill your super. You could also do this at the Shuro Chi checkpoint, but that involves a lot more resetting and wasting rally banners. If you're low on shards after the Tribute Hall, you might want to stick to the Whisper mission. As for the orbs you need to generate in strikes, you can load up the Corrupted Strike from the Director and farm orbs in the blind well. Although keep in mind you won't be making progress towards the playlist kills, so you'll want to finish the playlist strikes part before farming the blind well. Defeat 100 mini bosses in the EAZ is one of the longest steps here besides the dreaded 10 games of regular Gambit. God, that lasts forever. But luckily you can get this one done in a single match. I would recommend communicating with the randoms in your group or going in as a team to make this easier. 
During the Cabal variant of the EAZ activity, there will be an Engineer Scion that spawns roughly once a minute. If you kill this yellow bar dude, he actually counts as a mini boss kill. And so during the boss phase, you can simply farm him until you complete all the mini boss kills. This comes from Reddit user Terminator101. That's some really solid advice that's going to save a lot of people a lot of time. I certainly wish I knew this before doing the mini bosses. For the daily and weekly challenges, you should be able to use a few of the daily challenges like Strikes, Gambit, and PvP. Otherwise, I would recommend doing one of the heroic adventures on the Flashpoint destination, as that counts as a challenge. And then you can finish the Flashpoint with heroic public events to complete that objective as well. You could also speed through a Nightfall with modifiers like Heavyweight to get an easy challenge done. The rest of the objectives in the Renewed set are pretty much entirely up to you and any team members you're running with. I would definitely recommend teaming up for the patrol part. It's going to make your life a lot easier if you have two or three players running around doing patrols instead of just yourself. The rest of the objectives in the Renewed set are pretty much entirely up to you and any team you're running with. It all depends on how fast you can get it done. So make sure to keep looking at your Solstice objectives and see what elements you need to be farming and what certain actions you need to be doing because you can finish quite a few of them along the way. Now for the Majestic Armor set, you'll need to masterwork a single piece of gear to get the Triumph. If you already reset your Valor once during Season 7, this objective is retroactive. You might have to play another Crucible match just to get it to actually register, but you don't need to reset your Valor wearing the armor thankfully. If you already reset it once in Season 7, you're good to go. If you get the full Legendary set and masterwork one piece of it, You've got the title and you can chill out for the rest of the event, or grind your soul away with the other two classes. Overall, it's not as awful of a grind as running the same vanilla campaign missions over and over, at least not for me personally. And while the Solstice grind has never been the most fun thing to do in Destiny, I'd say it was worth it for the seal and title. And with all the ways to speed things up, it's definitely less painful now than it might be if any of this stuff gets patched. Overall, the Moments of Triumph 2019 seal is among one of the easier ones to get in the game, as none of the Triumphs require any sort of RNG, which is super nice. They may not be difficult challenges, but for a free seal and title, I'll take it. And just to let you guys know, Moments of Triumph has been extended until September 17th, so if you're hunting the ship, sparrow, or t-shirt, you'll have some extra time to get those, but keep in mind, Solstice of Heroes will still be ending on the 27th, so make sure to finish the seal by then. Good luck on the grind, Guardians. Hopefully these tips helped you out, and I'll see you in the next video.